the time it's <laughs> You know, it says something. And it was a place of dreams for my mother. My mother came from a very large rural family in Tennessee and was shuffled from home to home. She always had a desire for education, but she was never able to get beyond the third grade. And she married at age 13 with the hope of escaping a desperate situation. She and my father moved here to Detroit, and uh, he worked in a factory. In fact, I remember one Christmas being right here in this auditorium, <laughs> sitting right over there with for GM employees, they had a Christmas program for the kids. But some years later, my mother discovered that he was a bigamist, had another family. And of course, that occasioned the divorce. And you know, she only had a third grade education. And uh, consequently, we were thrown into a situation of dire poverty. And she still maintained that dream of education. But now it was for us, more so than for herself. We moved in with her older sister and brother-in-law in Boston. Typical tenement, large multifamily dwelling, boarded up windows and doors, sirens, games, murders. Both of our older cousins, who we adored, were killed. I remember when our favorite drug dealer was killed. <laughs> Then in Boston, Dallas, he drove a blue camera. You know, they used to bring us uh, candy, so we like to see the drug dealers. But um, the rats and the roaches, you know, in the more upscale areas, they call them water bugs, but we knew what they were. <laughs> but my mother was out working extraordinarily hard, two, sometimes three jobs at a time as a domestic, trying to stay off of welfare. And the reason for that was she noticed that most of the people she saw go on welfare never came off of it. And she didn't want to be dependent. She wanted <coughs> us also to be independent. She decided she would work as long and as hard as necessary, leaving at 5 in the morning, getting back after midnight, wow. day after day wow. after day, doing what other people didn't want to do. Mm to try to maintain her independence. And she was very thrifty. I mean, she would drive a car until it wouldn't make a sound. <laughs> then she would go and collect all of her dimes and nickels and quarters and buy a new car. And people would say, how does that woman afford